He really is. We're live. You're good. You know what? You're <laughs> Not, good. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> we were just talking about Mike Schilt off the air. Mike Schilt's a good. You know what? I would describe Mike Schilt. Mike Schilt's a good egg. You know, he's a he's a very good egg. He's a, he's a good person. Anyway, uh, former Garage Happy Hour guest, by the way, we've had a long list. I don't know what took me so long to get this guy on, because when you talk about the Garage Happy Hour, I mean, we're talking about St. Louis. We're talking about <laughs> friends. We're talking about people that I've known for. It doesn't always have to be people I've known for a long time, but a lot of them I have. And I thought about it this week. I'm like, what am I doing? Why have I not had Frank Viverito on the Garage Happy Hour? And it just so happens that yesterday they bust out this ginormous list of events <laughs> that are coming to St. Louis. <laughs> so hey, I'm I like, I got to do it. I was thinking the same thing, too. When are you going to have me on? It's unbelievable. I, I apologize for not having you on to, to this point. By the way. It's uh, I'm not I'm not a complainer. It's starting to get a little chilly in the garage. I think it's the first garage happy hour I've yeah. done where it's a little chilly. And when we're done, I'm going outside to bring in some plants. That's my big uh, activity for the evening. Are we getting down into the 30s tonight? I think. Yeah, you're the news guy. I should know that. KMOX <laughs> news time is uh, 5:33. Yeah, Let's we check we our. Make- <laughs> We may get to 36 tonight, just in case you're keeping score. Oh, it's good. Uh, we that that's fine. You know, that's fall weather. Well, I'll tell you, it's uh, it's great to have you. Uh, I really appreciate you coming on the Garage Happy Hour. We have a lot of people that were excited when I uh, rolled it out that you were coming, and I, I think that you connect with a lot of people. You're not even from St. Louis, and look at this. I mean, you know what? This is this is we've had a long history of great people in St. Louis who are not from St. Louis. I know it's always seems like we're this like close knit. Where'd you go to high school crowd? Jack Buck's not from St. Louis. You know, he he grew up uh, outside of St. Louis. Uh, I could go uh, outside a long list of Bob Costas and and on and on it goes. Stan the man. Stan Musial, Pennsylvania, you know. So this is uh, my New York friend, Frank Viverito. And I am. Yep. And I am uh, I'm so happy that he's with us. He's the president of the St. Louis Sports Commission. But let's make no mistake about it. You are a St. Louis and through and through. And I, I want to say this right away in all seriousness. And I have fun with you constantly. Yes. But I appreciate what you do. Uh, we are going to talk about the, the positives and the negatives of what goes on with our awesome city. We love our city. Uh, but we know that just like any, anybody or anything that we love, uh, we love uh, the good and the bad. And so we're going to uh, talk about that. But I, I love what you do, Frank. You fight for us. And in this year where we're really, just like a lot of cities, struggling, you have fought for us and you have come up with not one, not two, but five NCAA events awarded to St. Louis yesterday. That's exciting. Yes, yeah. it, it is exciting. And, and I'll tell you that I have uh, lived in St. Louis for 38 years. I got my uh, baptism in St. Louis. I learned about St. Louis from a guy named Jack Carney. OK, that's the first thing that I, that's the thing I did every day when we moved here. We moved here for Patty's job. And, and so I was, you know, riding my bike and taking walks in the Central West End. But every day I would listen to Jack Carney and, and he taught me about St. Louis. And uh, it's, you know, Cam Watch has always had uh, always had a soft spot in, in my heart. And, uh, you know, it's an honor to do what I do in this community because it is such a great sports town. And, and we always say, you know, a great sports town and all that. But but if you put the history of St. Louis sports, all sports, up against the history of any other city in this country, I'll take St. Louis. And and it's not, you know, just a, you know, boosterism to say it's the best sports town in the country. By that measure, I absolutely believe that it is. And and yes, we we did come away with some uh really good events from the NCAA bid process. Uh, yesterday, uh, the one I'm, I've been using the word elated about is the frozen four. And I had a conversation with, uh, 
Stu Durando from the Post Dispatch yesterday, and I, he used this line in in the paper today. It was the most requested event in my twenty five plus years at the Sports Commission. Wow. When are you going to get the Frozen Four back? I've I've heard that you know I won't say every day, but but if you know when I go out to speak and and when we talk about you know what events do you want to see in St. Louis Frozen Four? When is the Frozen Four coming back? And uh, uh, the group that asks as much as any are St. Louis University Billiken hockey players from back in the seventies the Bill Selman coach teams. And, and I have to tell you that when, when we're talking about the frozen four and, and when I talk about the sports commission and St. Louis is a sports town, I, I like to think in terms of narratives. Okay. And, and the hockey narrative in St. Louis is amazing, you know, and, and I don't even have to repeat, the events, you know them better than anybody, but, uh, you know, the, uh, um, the winter classic, the, the, the Stanley cup parties and, and parades, the, the, the all-star game, uh, now the frozen four, the, the number of local young players who have been drafted and, and are in the NHL, the Centene ice center, the, the 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 renewed rejuvenated enterprise center the the incredible work that the blues do in the community the development of sled hockey girls hockey kids hockey uh, on and on and on that is a heck of a narrative it really is you know in centene community ice center you're going to have the men's regional there you have the frozen four the following year in 2025 last had it here in 2007 Michigan State oh, over seven. Boston College in that when I was there uh, yep. I enjoyed that very much and uh, love the atmosphere I love being on display I think that's part of us here in St. Louis we just like showing off a little bit so we like the fact that especially in the northeast where there is a very strong college hockey presence but also in the Big 10 and, and you know the northern uh, states of Michigan and Wisconsin that St. Louis will be on display for the hockey world. And you just mentioned the NHL credentials. It's true. I mean, we are uh, one year, five first rounders in the NHL draft. This is uh, becoming a hockey city and that's a big step forward. And then there's the first and second round of the NCAA tournament. That's the following year in 2026, the Missouri Valley Conference, which has hosted like 19,000 of these. Actually, it's like 19, I think, um, has been amazing. And they are considered, I like the fact, of course, I'm a college basketball junkie, but I like that when people think of basketball, they also think of St. Louis and the Valley has a lot to do with that. Really? Where did you go to school, by the way? <laughs> I don't even, I wish I No, you don't answer. Don't answer that. Don't answer that. Can, can I go back to hockey for just a minute? Please do. Okay. The 07 Frozen Four. You mentioned Michigan State and Boston College in the finals. Do you remember the other two teams? Maine. Maine with who in goal? Oh, gosh. Who was in goal for the Black Bears? Oh, come on, Tom. Who was it? Ben Bishop. Oh, Ben Bishop was on it. <laughs> I should have known that. All right, oh, so Maine, you should have known that. Michigan and, uh, State, BC, Maine, North Dakota, North Dakota. Who was on that team? Now, see, I didn't do my homework on that. On oh, the two thousand seven Frozen Four, TJ Oshie. TJ Oshie, of course he was. He was on the North Dakota team. <laughs> yeah, I just told you that. <laughs> All right, so it was – Okay, basketball, it, basketball. It was yeah. awesome. No, no, so wait, one more thing on hockey before uh, – this, and, and I do want to touch on basketball. Actually, this wraps into the same question. Does it justify the effort, the push, over and over and over again to bring money into Enterprise Center so that you could refurbish that building? Oh, absolutely. Um, and, and it's, you know, it's not just any one event. It, it's all of the events, you know, starting with the SEC that was the beneficiary 
uh, of the uh, uh, of most uh, of the upgrades. You know, we're we're bringing wrestling in in uh, in March. Fingers crossed that uh, you know that fans can can attend events in in March. Uh, the Olympic gymnastics trials. Um, you know, it will be an event at, at the level of the PGA Championship and you know the the. Uh, uh, the, the NHL All-Star Game and the Winter Classic, the, the town will be electric and, and plenty of other events that are booked and to come. And, and not just for the, uh, you know, the fans that come to the events, the visitors that come to St. Louis for the events, but but it's also you know it, it's a it's a town square in in downtown St. Louis like like we have to keep up our, our facilities we we have to make downtown an inviting place um, you know and and it fits in with you know Ballpark Village it fits in with the the new MLS stadium like like it is just critical to move in the region forward downtown. We'll probably get into this a little bit more, but downtown is the heart of the region and, and we have to make it um, not just comfortable and secure for, for St. Louisans, but, but competitively we're just simply not going to bring uh, events and not going to be successful if we can't compete, not just with our arena, but with our downtown uh, against cities like, you know the cities that we compete against all the time: Nashville, Indianapolis, San Antonio, Atlanta. Uh, you know, on and and on. Uh, this is going to make some people mad, but I don't really care. Um, <laughs> uh oh. Uh, we have to be more regional, and we just have to embrace the city's got to embrace the county, and the county's got to embrace the city. Frank, I mean, I I, I just. Uh, it's, it's tough for me because I have friends on both sides, but I'm telling you that the first thing I heard when St. Louis City SC came out with their name was like, oh, city. Ah. Like, right. What are you talking about? This is our city. This is our city. That's right. your downtown if you live in Wentzville or if yep. you live in Belleville. That's yours. I mean, it's our city. Why are we like that? It's very troubling to me that you said you were going to make people, some people angry by saying what, because that should absolutely not be the case. And, and, you know, there are reasons for it, you know, that, that we are not structured properly, you know, as a region, way too many municipalities and, and people grow up in, in, in way too small uh, a, a world. Now it makes for great suburbs, but but it doesn't make always for a great region. And and we have to cooperate. We have to consolidate. Um, you know, we don't even often think of how many ways th this hurts us. You know, the the crime statistics are one thing, but but our little world of bidding for events. Um, I, I say this a lot. We have done a great job of replicating almost the exact same rec center in every St. Louis County municipality. And we haven't built any of the facilities that places like Overland Park, Kansas and, and Cooperstown, New York have built to host events, uh, traveling events for, for, for young people. And, and you always hear that when the economy is down, the first things to start back up our, our kids sports be, because that's, you know, there's always going to be a few dollars for the kids to play because it's that important. And, and so, you know, we just haven't even, we, we haven't developed the right facilities in the community. Um, you know, we, 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 we have too much that's spent on duplication and, and waste and, and uh, you know, St. Louis, downtown St. Louis is, is, is a sports hub and, and we all come downtown to, to watch those games. And, and it doesn't matter if it's the Rams or the Battle Hawks or the Blues or the Cardinals or St. Louis City. I mean, th as you said, th this is our town. It is our town for sure.
Um, Frank Viverito, your office actually overlooks that new MLS stadium site. That's pretty yes. sweet. I, I was in your office for that St. Louis Sports Commission trivia night. I'm like, oh, I, I think I'm going to stand right here and look at this for a while. K- Carolyn Kindlebetz is, is joining our board, and I asked her if she could please make sure the roof of the stadium is low enough that I can watch the games from my desk. Uh, and and I, you know, I, I've worked downtown now since uh, April of 1984. And, you know, it's, um, I, I, you know, I, I, I love St. Louis. I, I love downtown, but it's, it's too often a step ahead and a, and a step back. And, you know, we're, we're hopefully finally building the critical mass, you know, that, that we absolutely have to have there. And, you know, you start from the arch and, and, and work West and ballpark village and Bush stadium and, and uh, uh, you know, the, the enterprise center uh, union station, the aquarium, uh, the MLS stadium, the hotels, you know, we, we have to make that as vibrant as we possibly can, walkable, safe. Uh, we could spend the whole hour talking ab- about that. Oh, yeah. I mean, safe is a huge word for sure. I mean, we've got to make it safe. Uh, and we could get, I'm not going to get into a whole hour of talking about, you know, all, all of those issues that are going on with crime and safety, but we absolutely have to. And I know that you've been involved in some of those talks and have heard some of those discussions about how to make the city safe for sports fans. The more people uh, going on the, in one area, uh, you don't see it, it's, you know, you, I, I, I get concerned when I see downtown as empty as it is, there's going to be rampant crime uh, and issues going on when there are a lot of people walking around perhaps less so, but still you're putting people at risk if, if it's not safe. You need density, you need light, you need activity, um, you, you, you need, you know, retail, you need residential. I mean, we have a lot of, of work to do. And, and one of the ways that that happens more easily is if it's a regional approach and, and, and not just city approach because the city has many needs and and they're going to be addressed better in in a regional way. Uh, Frank, what about, um, you mentioned the gymnastics and I want to talk about the, that and the U S Olympic time trials for swimming as well. So gymnastics got rescheduled right to June of 2021 and the swimming you're not, you don't have it yet, but you're talking about filling these huge pools inside the dome in America's center and that you learn in February, I believe, whether you get that or not. Right. But but that can't just be one question. OK, like that has that we have to unpack that. Let's discuss all of that. The, the Olympics. That is, you know, we are we are the site. I know this means a lot to you, too. We're the site of the 1904 Olympics. We're in Olympic City. And I know that that you always make a push to keep those Olympic sports going. Yes, we are America's first Olympic city. And, you know, you're the trivia master at at Trivia Night. Of of course, you know what the most incredible distinction from the 1904 Olympics was, right? Right. Right. (laughs) Right. Right. Yeah. But we were the first American city. Well, it goes a little bit beyond that. One of the innovations of the 1904 Games gold, silver, and bronze medals, okay? And you wouldn't even know that if you look in the history books because you'd see gold, silver, and bronze awarded at the first games in Athens in 1896 and in Paris, the second Olympiad in 1900. But gold, silver, and bronze weren't awarded in those games. They were only retroactively awarded after the 1904 Olympics. So gold, silver, and bronze medals were born here. And yes, we we use that as a way to distinguish St. Louis and as a way to uh, uh, to sell St. Louis when it comes to bringing uh, Olympic related events here. And the the two that we're going to talk about, the Olympic gymnastics trials and the Olympic swimming trials, are, are two of the biggest uh, American Olympic events. And you're right. The uh, Olympic gymnastics trials were set for 
June of 2020. They have been rescheduled for June 24 to 27 of 2021. And not just uh, what we call artistic gymnastics, which is what everybody knows from the Olympics, but, but also rhythmic gymnastics, uh, trampoline and tumbling, and, and a couple of other gymnastics disciplines will all have their national championships in St. Louis the week before uh, Simone Biles takes the stage and a national gymnastics congress will take place in St. Louis. So huge economic impact. Hopefully, if we can get uh, you know fans back on 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 planes and in arenas uh, by the end of June, so a wonderful event. And you know, and and when you're talking about Simone Biles, one of the greatest athletes who's ever lived, um, you know, you're you're talking about electricity and 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 excitement, you know, that 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 we treasure from our big events. And, you know, and the, the person who comes to mind when I think of Simone Biles, um, not because they're the same size, but, but is Jackie Joyner Kersey in, in terms of the stature that, that, that Jackie and Simone have in, in the Olympic movement and, and, and among the greatest athletes of all time. So I, and I can't wait until, uh, uh, next June. It's, it's going to be incredible. Four nights, uh, of television on, NBC to show off the community uh, and, uh, you know, a, a sold out enterprise center will just be, uh, uh, you know, right up there uh, among the great events in our sports history. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's it's a lot of money for the city, a lot of hotel room nights and the, the swimming trials, by the way, seventy four million dollars uh, when they came to Omaha four years ago. Oh, the swimming trials, it, it's hard to to describe the swimming trials. Okay. So as an event, it's 15 separate events. Okay. Takes place over eight days in June, but before the Olympic Games. So we're bidding for June of 2024. Uh, they're down to a few cities. Uh, we've got a pretty good shot, uh, but there's not a natatorium constructed that, that could hold an event that has grown to, to that size. And so it has to take place using portable pools uh, in an arena or a dome. There's only two facilities in the country that, that kind of mirror each other exactly uh, in, in terms of being able to produce this event. And that's Omaha, which has a convention center uh, connected to an arena and St. Louis, which has a con convention center co connected to a dome. So we would be building two or three 800,000 gallon temporary pool, one for competition, one or two for warm up inside the dome in halls five and then in hall six, which is the dome floor. And we'd construct a natatorium for about 24 or 25,000 fans. Multiply that by 15 events, that gets you pretty close to capacity of 400,000 people to come and watch swimming eight nights of national television uh, on NBC. And as you mentioned, a $74 million uh, economic impact in Omaha with a building that, that was probably 60% the capacity of, of what we'd have in St. Louis. So, you know, you're looking at a hundred million dollars and a hundred million dollar events don't come down the pike very often. No, they so don't. It, it, it would, again, you know, just light up St. Louis and, and, you know, they bring back all, all the alumni and, and you talk about, um, you know, the history of St. Louis, America's first Olympic swimming team was 1904 in St. Louis. And, and you have an event like this and, and you have all the greats of the sport come back and, and, you know, I, I can't tell you who's going to be, you know, who are going to be the stars of the 24 uh, games, but, but, or 24 uh, trials, but, uh, but I can tell you that, you know, Michael Phelps will likely be here. And, and uh, again, you're talking about the, not to swim, but you're, you know, you're talking about one of the greatest athletes of all times and, and what an incredible 
run USA Swimming has had, you know, over the past 120 years. And, and uh, you know, that th that's the best that, that we can do in, in terms of a sports commission in a region to, to attract that type of, of an event to our downtown. It's a huge deal, uh, and it's on NBC, as, as you mentioned. It's the Olympics, just like the gymnastics. The swimming would be on NBC, so you're talking about millions of people watching St. Louis on display. Make no mistake, they will have all kinds of shots of St. Louis and stories about St. Louis as they go along. That's how people get to know who we are. That's how good people say, hey, that looks like a nice place to live, or hey, that looks like a nice place to start a company. That's how we get known is events like this that Frank is putting together. Uh, it's exciting to think about that during a pandemic. Uh, we also, you know, during this challenging year, have to hold events virtually and without a crowd. And I know that you've worked very hard and it's hard to know that the Musial Awards this year, the Stantennial, the 100th birthday of Stan the Man, will not be able to be held in front of a big, booming crowd inside uh, Stiefel Theater. But um, it is something that I know you've worked very hard on, and it's happening, isn't it? It, it is. And, and uh, I, I don't take credit for much, okay? I, I'm, I'm Mr. <laughs> deflect credit. But I will take credit for the term Stantennial, okay? Yes, I remember when you said it to me. Yeah, kind of like let the event last year. Yeah, exactly right. And yes, b bitter disappointment that we can't have, you know, this this once in a lifetime celebration on stage. Uh, I'm already thinking about Musials 101, okay, for for next year and and we'll have to recreate it. Um but we're not going to be able to be on stage uh this year. And and so um thank goodness that the 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 uh uh, we'll be able to produce a television show uh, uh, of, you know, a national television show that will air on CBS uh, Saturday, December 26th at five at 4 p.m. Central. Saturday, December 26th, 4 p.m. Central. The Musial Awards on CBS, and and I'm so excited for that show. Um, our dear friend Mark Schreiber is the executive producer of that event. He is working so hard on, on that, and 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 our two lead segments uh, are going to be our two highest profile honorees. We have our lifetime achievement award honoree, Hank Aaron, will be interviewed by Bob Costas, and then our Zeal Award for extraordinary character goes to Bubba Wallace. And the interview took place this this week uh, by James Brown. And so, you know, that's th those are the leads. There's seven other stories, all, you know, just as good as the stories we've, you know, we've done in the past. You know, one or two a little bit lighter, uh, you know, but, but you know, one or two related to, to the challenges of the day, um, but all wonderful stories, deserving honorees and we are trying so hard to, to make the Musial Awards and good sportsmanship synonymous with St. Louis. Uh, that's who we are. We are good sports. We were taught to be good sports generations ago by people like Stan Musial and Gussie Bush and Jack Buck. And, and we have remained good sports for, for generations. And, and so the the uh, most important awards in sports uh, that honor the best in sports should be here in St. Louis. And, you know, we can't wait to uh, uh, to see what happens on December 26th. But we're also going to celebrate Stan on November 21st, which would have been the night of the show at Stiefel Theater. And November 21st is actually Stan's 100th birthday and uh you know i won't get into too much detail but but we're going to do a live event at uh, a socially distance event at bush stadium uh where fans can come and 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 meet the family and the musical family and and share in the day we're going to do a drive-by uh birthday party at the musical statue 
Uh, we're asking for people to share their favorite moments of, uh, of interaction um, with uh, Stan the Man. We're creating a uh, beautiful coffee table book that will uh, uh, tell the stories of all of our honorees uh, over the 15 years of the Musial Awards and celebrate uh, Stan on his 100th birthday. We're creating a Stantennial party box. Uh, Channel 5 is putting together a 100th birthday uh, Musial special that will air uh, that evening on uh, Channel 5. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it, 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 he, he just is St. Louis and, uh, um, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna find a way to, to celebrate and to feel good, uh, about him and, and all that he stood for. Wow. It's a, a big year for you with all the announcements and the musical awards. And, you know, when I think about this year, of course, it's been a very challenging year for many, many people around the world. Um, for Cardinals fans specifically to lose Lou Brock and Bob Gibson and all the outpouring, you know, I think about what a special uh, fan base it is uh, where they tell stories and how it's tied the generations together. And Stan Musial, it is, it has always been that way with him and Red Shane Deanst and so many others, um, you know, and, and I know if you go to musialawards.com, you can, actually leave a, a a written you know thought right and, and story yeah. about stan and be part of it like i think that's what you're trying to do here is it's it's the Musi awards and you have hank aaron and bubba wallace and bob Costas and james brown but it's about all of us like you want right. everyone to you know you're trying to just give everyone something to to finish the year out on strong you know and feel yes. good about who we are a a absolutely. And that'll happen on December 26th. And, you know, I can tell you that that uh, we've become very close with Stan's family. Uh, two of Stan's daughters live in St. Louis, Jean and, and Janet. Uh, uh, two of our favorite uh, musical grandchildren are uh, uh, Lindsay Edmonds, Jean's daughter, and Brian Schwarzy's, uh, Brian Schwarzy, Janet's son. And, and, and they are you know, carrying the name proudly and, and working with us to uh, honor the, these great sports and, and to keep the memory of, of their dad uh, alive. And, and we always mention uh, Lil Musial as well. She just passed her 100th birthday milestone and, and, and the kids, the family always remind us it's, it's not just Stan the man, it's, it's Stan and Lil. And, and, uh, you know, so many cities don't have one, okay, he hero at, at the level of, of Musial, Gibson, Brock. And, and, and we have those three and, and actually many more. You know, because it's not just about the numbers and the, the, the championships and the, and the great play on the field and the great sportsmanship. And, and it's not just about Stan. Like, the legacy is those people, you know, also. Like, how the family, but also us. Like, the legacy, what an incredible thing to say that your legacy lives through all of these people. Fans, media, family, whoever came across that were influenced and their lives changed and they became a little bit like they picked up a part of you along yep. the way. It's amazing. A absolutely. And, and it's, you know, it's, it's why we've stayed in St. Louis now for 38 years. Uh, it's why I absolutely believe St. Louis is the best s sports town in America. Um, you know, it's why I believe these are the most important awards in, in sports and, you know, it's something everybody, every St. Louisan should be proud of. And, I, and I'm just, you know, thrilled and, and delighted that um, that we can celebrate these awards every year. Um, you have been a part of them every year. Uh, it's your booming voice that, that <laughs> off the show at Stiefel Theater. And, and I never take for granted. Now, I'm, I'm just waiting. If I get asked, it's it's a it's a big honor. It, it, it's a big honor. We have sat next to each other at those events at, at Stiefel Theater. And, and I know that, uh, that, that you and Angie love the event. I, I think you need to bring uh, Audrey and Erica uh, coming up the next time we go live because they're getting to be the age where, where those stories make an impression on the young ones. 
Uh, and, and that's another great thing about the show. It, it is for all ages and it celebrates people of, of all ages and all levels uh, of sport because sportsmanship truly crosses uh, everywhere in humanity. It's a beautiful thing. It really is. If you've never been, uh, make sure that you watch this. It'll be on CBS Saturday, December 26th. St. Louis will be on the national scene again and again. I guess the last thing, Frank, before we go, Frank Viverito, the president of the St. Louis Sports Commission. So this is going to be um, – um, let, me, let me have a little sip of my – it's fall, you know, having a little, just a little, a little happy hour whiskey. It's no big deal. Um, last thing. Yeah. Uh, it, I, I mentioned this in the beginning. St. Louis, you know, we're very proud of the city. I think that there's no place really like us anywhere. I, you know, we have these little quirks and different types of foods and people and, and things that we like and traditions uh, about us. And, um, I think we're always talking about us to, to other people. I find myself running uh, away with stories about St. Louis when I travel and I, I, it's home, you know, and mm -hmm. it feels so good. And um, what, if you were to describe St. Louis to somebody who had never been or just tried to understand what we are, how would you do that? I know that you do, but, but how would you do that to somebody? I, I, I do. I, and, you know, some of this may be a little bit cliche, but I think it's absolutely true. I mean, there's no place th that has, that is such a big city with such a small town feel. Okay. There, it, it just is not replicated in, in other places. And, and if you look at a continuum, okay, of, of what do we have to, to enjoy here and how accessible and affordable is it, I, I think we win that scale hands down. You know, th there are communities that, that have more to do, and, and New York may be one of them, okay? Um, there may be cities that are more affordable than St. Louis and uh, Denton, Texas may be one of those. Okay. But, but there's no place that has as much to do and, and, and is as easy and affordable to do it as St. Louis. And, and I don't think we, we always look at it that way. And, and I think sometimes we do take it off uh, for granted. And, and so when you talk about livable, you talk about affordable, and you talk about enjoyable, like that package is really special. Very well said. And uh, I, I appreciate uh, everything that you do for the city. And not, well, I shouldn't say just the city, but I, I like to say the city. When I say the city, I, I think of everything. You know, what, when I go to, when I travel, Hey, where are you from? I'm from St. Louis. You know, I'm not from Ladue. I'm not from uh, Oakville. I'm not from Florissant. I'm not from St. Charles. I'm not from Belleville. I'm not from O'Fallon. I'm from St. Louis, and, I, and I'm proud to say it. And I love how you go to bat for us. Yeah, you really do. And, and my last thing for you, and, and this is not gratuitous um, because it's not just you and, and I'll still consider you part of the sports media, even though you've, you know, <laughs> and blossomed, but, but, but our sports media do a great job of telling our St. Louis story and, and you can, you know, at, at KMOX, you can go through the ages and, and understand who those people have been over time you know, Jack Buck and Bob Costas and Joe Buck and, and Bill Wilkerson and, and, and so many, many others. And, and, and not just the, the national voices of St. Louis, but the, uh, uh, I don't know that St. Louis ever had a media champion uh, as passionate as Brian Burwell. And Brian wasn't even close to a native St. Louis, and, and but he figured it out real quickly, and he carried that that torch for for St. Louis for years, and and you do it too, and Bernie Nicholas has done it, and my 
goodness, Mike Bush has done it. Mike has hosted 15 years of the of the Musical Awards, and, and we do not have anywhere close to enough time to talk about the the the, the passionate way that our sports media ha have sold this community. Media get a bad rap uh, in in a lot of ways, and 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 uh, uh, feel like you know you're talking about um, uh, uh, what's going on in the world right now. Um, Biden has a town hall one place, uh, Trump has a town hall another place, and has a town hall in, in Ackerman's garage. <laughs> right. So, uh, That's right. You know, it, 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 it is what it is, um, you know, but but we love St. Louis and, and, and we appreciate uh, your passion for St. Louis and, and, and the passion of our sports media for our town. Well, I appreciate it. We've uh, we've done some really special things in this garage, that's for sure. On this show here this year, it's been it's been an unexpected thing. I didn't think that it would do what it did, but it did. And uh, and and I I'm so happy that you were able to be uh, here and, and use this forum uh, to talk about all the things that you do, Frank. You're drinking whiskey. I'm drinking water. Stay hydrated. We're, we're both making lemonade, right? Out of that's right. It is getting cold in here. Okay, you're done. Frank, Frank, we're done. I really appreciate you very much, and I appreciate everybody joining us on the Garage Happy Hour. This president of the St. Louis Sports Commission, Frank Viverito. Uh, next week, same place, same time, 5.30. We do it live on Thursdays. We will have – you never know. Never know who we're going to have. I'll let you know ahead of time, though. Frank, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Tom. Great to be with you always. Kevin Wheeler is ready to go on KMOX at 615 on Sports Open Line. We will talk to you next week.